Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Redstone. In this video, we're going to be starting the circuit design portion of the series. And we're going to start with a really basic circuit. It's not going to be very hard, you can probably figure it out pretty much as soon as I finish describing it, but that's partially to get us warmed up, but it's also so that we can illustrate a really important part of circuit design, especially if you want to have a really fast circuit. So, here's the first circuit we're going to build. We're going to have four inputs, and only if all four inputs are on do we have our door open. That's it. That's our first circuit. Really easy. You can probably already figure out how to do it. Now, if you have any doubt in your ability to figure out how to do it, I suggest you pause the video here and try to figure it out on your own, because that'll help you learn a lot better. But if you already know how to do it, then I suggest just keep watching, because I'm going to show you how to do it, and then I'm going to illustrate a really important point in circuit design. So, I'll give you a moment to go away if you want to try it on your own. And they're all gone now. So, a way you do this is, first off, we want if this, 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 and this, do we want the door to open? The key word there is AND, because we're going to use the AND gate. No fancy circuits, no nothing, just AND gates. So, first off, I'm going to put a block here. This way I can get power from all of the levers. So, there, I now have power from the levers. And to start off with, I'm going to build an AND gate. So, I'm just going to build a basic AND gate. Slightly modified, but, yeah. Basic AND gate between these. And here's the output. Okay, so now this will tell me if I have both of these on. Okay, easy enough. But we don't want this to open the door. We also want to have if these are down and this is down. So this AND gate's already telling us if both of these inputs are down, so I'm going to test if this input is down and this input. So I'm going to use another AND gate. And now if all these are down, that gives me a signal. But again, we don't want if this signal is down and the door to open. We want if all these three signals are down and this is down. So, you already have this, which tells us if these three are down. So if this and this, and I'll actually need to do some more interesting wiring to get this to fit. Whoops, not glowstone. Then, okay, so if all of these are down, and only if all of these are down, do we get a signal that makes the door open? There, easy enough. And just to make it obvious that the door has opened, I'm going to have a repeater that brings our signal out and around, and I'm going to set time back to day. So there, that's a solution. But it's not the best solution, and here's why. I'm going to talk about a principle that will... Well, it's going to be a very important principle, I'll put it that way. So, let's talk about why this isn't a very good way of doing this. So, first off... If you want to hook gates together like this to get one giant unified output, there's two ways to do it. The first way, which is the way we did it, is something called serial logic. That means you essentially just take one gate, plug its output into the input of the next gate. And then you take the output of that gate and plug that into the input of the next gate. If there's another one, you take the output of that and plug it into the input of the next gate. And you have this giant series of AND gates that essentially creates the output. That's why it's called serial logic. And I shouldn't have said series of AND gates there, because it can be a couple of different logic gates, but AND gate is one of them. So, here we have the giant series of AND gates, and that gets us our giant unified output. And serial logic isn't all that bad. In fact, in a lot of ways it's good, because often serial logic is very compact. The issue with serial logic, though, is it tends to be a bit slow. So, for example, if I turn all these back off, so, let's say I just have all these down, right here, just like this. Now, look at the output. I'm going to flip this down. Notice how there's a huge delay between that and that. Yeah, serial logic is a little bit slow. So, this is a way of doing it, and it's not a bad way of doing it, especially if you're going for compactness. But it's also a very slow way of doing it. So, if you're going for speed, there's another way of organizing these AND gates that's a little bit faster. And we're going to talk about that next. Okay, so I went ahead and I destroyed all the circuitry, and now we're going to rebuild it using the fast way. The idea here is to do as many things simultaneously as possible. So just keep that in mind. 
Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to add this input and this input. So this and this. And the reason we're still doing this is because it's still part of the logical process and it has to be done at some point. Might as well do it now. Okay. So if our next step could either be to add this input and this input like before, but we don't want to do that because that will require us to wait for the is and gate to calculate, and we don't want to wait for that. So instead, I'm going to and this input and this input, because that and gate could happen at the exact same time as that and gate. So, here we go. There, now we have two and gates which can calculate simultaneously. And now all we have to do is we have to and these two, and that should give us our output. And the reason this works, because this AND gate's telling me if I have both of these inputs down, this one and this one. This AND gate tells me if I have both of these inputs down, so this one and this one. And therefore, logically, if I have both of these inputs down, and I have both of these inputs down, logically I must have all four inputs down. So there. And now, since these two AND gates are happening at the same time, this makes it a lot faster. You'll notice, this is going much, much quicker than our other one. So yeah. And this is called parallel logic. The idea behind parallel logic, again, is to do as many things simultaneously as possible. So there you go. Not that hard. But parallel logic, although faster, does have one major disadvantage. Parallel logic tends to be a lot s bigger than serial logic. And that's not necessarily an issue if you don't care about size, but if you do, it's something to keep in mind. Another disadvantage to parallel logic is that it doesn't work with everything. Not everything can be broken down like this. Most of the big logic gates, in fact, all the big logic gates can, so OR, AND, XOR, XNOR, NOR, and AND, all that stuff, all that can be done in parallel, but not everything can. So you also have to be a bit careful with it, because, you know, you can't do it with everything. But when you can do it, it will make your device much faster. So there you go, that's all I want to talk about in this video. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.